to this Chag versus MK Leo winners finals of this MSM of a number unknown to us. <laughs> There's just been so many MSM. <laughs> There's been so. I many. wish we could just call them by seasons because that would be easier for me to remember. Like, oh, this is season season seven. three, episode four. Ex exactly, that would be easier. But uh, no seasons here, of course. This is uh, currently we're in the middle of summer. Summer of Smash is well underway. Uh, of course, MK Leo has been staying here in SoCal until he heads over to Red Tide. And of course, Chad also doing the same here, staying in SoCal until Red Tide is up. I am Chad starting off solid 56%. Leo here gonna take the time to try and make something back here. Gets the nair but doesn't get the back here afterwards. Gonna go for the back throw. No dash attack may have been just a little bit too high a percent. Leo not wanting to risk overextending there. Yeah, and that's good too. He wants to hold on to as much stage control as possible just because I did kind of get to talk to MK Leo a little bit over the over actually last night. Uh, we kind of hung out, had a little bit of food, but he did tell me, you know, the Bylo is one of those characters he feels he can make work, and off the bat, you can see MK Leo's confidence in the character, just understanding one of the characters' weaknesses is speed. So being able to have as much stage advantage all the time as best possible, because then you can start using the distance game. Yeah, this was. Byleth was definitely a character that, like, I tried to play when they released and kind of rode off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, up until, you know, a week or two ago when Leo really started to show the world, hey, this character's got some sauce to it. Like Exactly. I feel like Le MK Leo is the best kitchen cook of all time because people be like, you know what, you can't have steak every day. And MK Leo's like, I know how to make the steak a little bit different. And that's what the beauty of MK Leo is. Of course, he understands that Palutena is still an all-around great character, so you have to still respect Palutena as much as possible. Can we talk about he didn't have a way to land, saw the Palutena jump at him, and used the uppy in the air for the that little bit of stall, stall that, that it That was gives. smart. That was smart. And I he's like able to land his way down safely, win neutral, and take the first stock that he had no right to have. Yeah, and that just goes to show, like, like I said, MK Leo was a different cook. He knows every single spice Nick. variety. Show everything. me another player in the world that goes for that. Yeah, and it just, yeah, I think that's also the beauty about MKLeo. Like, I thought, like, hey, man, maybe go Marth, but he's like, no, he actually thinks Vials is better than Marth. And he's making a believer out of me, yeah. honestly. And while we're talking about it, Chag is able to finally make the return stock. Only 48%. You know, Palu has some pretty solid damage output. Going to be able to make it back, but not if... Leo's able to keep the advantage going like that. And we see the Nair get this all started. Nair is kind of the same move for both of these characters. I actually think Violet's is a little bit better because of the landing hitbox yeah, on it. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Violet's Nair seems to be like Palutena Nair plus. So, be that, yeah, that landing it, hitbox changes a lot. Like, it, Palu's Nair is obviously like a huge part of her kit, but the thing is, Violet's Nair, because of that landing hit, often mm -hmm. shield pokes. Yes. And wins neutral for Byleth a lot of times. Yeah, I think that's the difference between Ariel's of those two characters. Is one is a very they both win neutral, but just Byleth is a little bit better. It gives Byleth enough there in terms of the neutral here. But MK Leo, like you said, really keen on the landing. He's not going to look to stall at this time. He seems to jump there to just try to get around. Chad, I like the fact that he looks to punish that down to you know how many end frames that's got, and then looks at MK Leo off the side. Yeah, and the thing is, we saw. Chag actually get a Nair, drags it down, mm -hmm. but because of the difference in the Nair, it doesn't have that landing hitbox. He yes. actually wasn't able to convert off of it. Yeah. That said, he is able to convert off of the ledge trap situation he had Leo in, taking the lead in this game number one with the back air. Yeah, of course, having a lead is pretty big right now, especially for Chag. Able to catch the land there. I'm sorry, the get up after the platform. Chase with an upper. He's got M. Kaleo at the corner. Oh, oh what a play. He, he had the right idea. He did. He did. You got points for trying here, but that out tilt will set M. Kaleo free. Really good anti-air. Able to catch her opponent trying to overextend himself in the air. Yeah, and he knows this is Pelotena. She's going to yeah. jump. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's the beauty of also you as a player. You should evaluate as almost the common option your opponent would go for and how to punish that accordingly. Okay, so there's going to be no ledge invincibility. Jack does get the down tilt. But it's kind of the sour spot far away hitbox, mm -hmm. not able to combo off of it. Not the one he wants. I love the use of the jab. We never really see that from Palutena, but it's such a fast option that's so good at beating out spot dodges. Yeah. I, low key, I'm kind of weird because I do miss Smash 4 Palutena jab. How you could do a jab, 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 jab down. Into the gray. Yeah. yeah. So good. Ja Palu jab one in Smash 4 was funky, but, you know, much better character. I feel like any Palu main would have traded. Palu Smash 4 jab one for this character. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And then you can go to show for Chad specifically, right? That trade-in is a really, really big boost. And of course, Chad is taking game one over MK Leo. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I don't see Leo changing characters. This is kind of a character he's kind of put in. He like he told me has a lot of confidence in the character. If he changes characters, I think we are going to see the Aegis. He might give us Marth. I actually, he was going to go. I initially told him, MK Leo, please go Marth. 
And, he, and then I was like, I actually. I think they'd just be a little greedy there, Vance. No, you know why I told him not to go with Marth? Because me and Strides have keep this argument that Marth is bad. That MKLeo believes Marth is good. Uh, and the reason why I'm talking about MKLeo, because uh, last night we ended up taking him to a Korean barbecue and we had a good time. And I did get to talk to him a little about his thoughts on Pilot altogether here. But uh, looking, like I said, he's looking to make a believer out of me here. Despite the fact that Shaq took game one. Okay, and the f Asphalt Nair into the runoff forward air. That is a true combo that Leo's going to be able to perform here. But speaking of true combos and even untrue ones that Chag's going to extend, that's a quick 45 onto Leo as well. Okay, Leo looking for a little bit of movement under the stage. Let me see if it can catch Chag landing at this point. Really good opportunity still. You did him go for up B, right? Looking to get them angling, particularly here. We'll be able to use this recovery, but takes his time at the ledge. He sees how Palatina is hunting with these back airs. You have to give respect to that enhanced ability, and you have to give respect to that reach, because, man, that back air. The one might not have been reaching, but it was still good to hit here. Well, there's, there's that landing near hitbox. It's so, like you said, so good in the neutral. Yeah, and the thing is, when Leo's doing that, he's fastballing it partway through, and that's what's able to keep them in position for the landing hit to combo into something like mm -hmm. the dash attack or the forward tilt. Or the, you know, we've seen tech chases off of it, grabs. See, this is why I'm happy you're here, Archer, because you called out how Mkele is so understanding of Shaq as a player, but also Palutena. He's been stalling his landings every single time since you mentioned that upbeat. Yeah, and it's good because it doesn't, it's not really that laggy. Like, sure, there's a few frames where you're in the action, mm -hmm. but it's not an air dodge lag. Exactly. And it's such a unique option. Every player knows of this caliber knows how to punish an air dodge to the ground. They're going to jump up there, they're going to wait for it, then they're going to punish the air dodge. Exactly. But doing the up like that, it's so non-committal. Yeah, there, there's less in like frames in that up B than that air dodge. And exactly. it's definitely the better of the two. Uh, but good read from Chad. They're definitely getting the better of him and his opponent there. Uh, getting that up smash too. It's got good good range in, in terms of verticality. So if MKLL did try to jump, he was going to jump into the light, unfortunately. All right, here's a couple of nairs. Drag down up here, not able to follow up. Looks for another nair. Oh, but this is big for Chak, too. What a big corner kill here to have MKLeo already at the ledge. Ah, oh, the missed nair there. I do like that, too, because he short hopped it just to see if he could also catch the roll, too, at the same time. Yeah, but Leo saw the jump and said, I'm just going to run under this, not press a button, just reposition and get something later. Exactly. Sometimes it's better to not be caught pressing a button. But Chag, oh, with God. the forward smash, catches Leo's landing, takes the lead once again. And we saw even the game one, it looked rocky for, at the beginning for Chag, but Chag got a lead off of a pretty solid hit, able to just run away. He's been playing his advantage stock-wise so incredibly well, mm -hmm. where once he gets the lead, he's done a really good job of not throwing it away, just exactly. playing it safe, going for Palutena's safer aerials. Hold it as much as possible, right? Look look to see how Leo is going to try to get it up in the stage. But up tilt, like I said, he all, I think he understands how Chad wanted to try to move around to the platform, tries to cover that option, and then, you know, less end like on that up tilt, can go for a forward tilt and then punish Chad accordingly. All right, the back air just catching the star up of Leo's moves there. Uh, I, that feels a little greedy from Chad, but <laughs> and against any other player, you know, you say, okay, that's a little greedy, but you have a stock to play with. Like, you're only at 20%. Right, right. But this is Leo. Like, <laughs> it's so scary because you know what he can do with an inch. You, you don't want to play. You don't want to give. You don't want to be too greedy and give your opponent that. Yeah, because that, that inch. Because that's just mom, a momentum swing right there. Even if it's a small one, even if you're still in the lead. This is Leo now got one hit, and he's been able to keep positioning under you the whole time. Down tilt into the up air. It's not going to kill, but it's just so close. And speaking of being positioned under Chag, like, that was really good for Leo to just understand, okay, how is he going to land? Let me try to catch him here. Good choice of just going for neutral air dodge to avoid any potential opportunities there from Chag. Down tilt into the up air, catches the landing under, and he sees, mm. Le he sees Chag doesn't want to commit to the back air completely. Yeah. So Chag drifts in the whole way. He hits Leo there. Mm -hmm. But if he if Leo holds shield there, he just gets grabbed, thrown off stage. So he's going. And for that's these. that's not the least that's not the least worst opportunity there because you just got a chance to reset yourself. You're yeah, so he's just going for these safer spaced aerials on Chag's shield, or on Leo's shield, excuse me. And he's just trying to say, drop shield, let the shield poke mm -hmm. you. But Leo uses the hurtbox shifting of the down tilt to crouch under the <laughs> back air, so big. get the hitbox out, and it's a true combo kill into the up air. It's a two up for air. one, because you crouch under that back yeah. air and then punish check afterwards. Leo knows a little bit about that hurtbox shifting, like you said. 
Right, great positioning with the up air, just not gonna let Chag land here. Goes for the back air, but not in a position to make it connect. Down throw into the up air. Uh, second up air for Chag, gonna get it in there as well. Knows that third up air will not be a good possibility, yeah. but he looks at the positioning too, because he can put Ellen Kaleo off the stage. Take the time to hit him I, with that neutral air. I feel like the explosive flame itself is the reason he doesn't go for up air there. Because he could, right. probably could have made another up air connect. But if he goes for that neutral air, he can try and put Leo in a position to burn a resource getting exactly. around the explosive flame. Set up Leo for those opportunities here, but Leo has a really big setup for an opportunity here for a 2-1 as he has a stock lead. Goes for that down throw. I like the play, though. Play, plays a little bit patient to see how Chag is going to react and try to go for the grab. I, the Nair on the shield, it surprises me it didn't poke at any point, but Leo still able to just keep the pressure on get the grab after. I think the one thing that we also... Oh, oh no. no, man. Yeah, charge it on him. Yeah, definitely Amir. lay it on him, too. Go for that, Emir. Okay, check a little bit coming back. I like that teleport opportunity to kind of close the gap as soon as possible. Gets towards the ledge. Explosive Flame trying to force something out of Leo here. Chak has a lot to try to catch up here. Yeah, and again, we're seeing all these options that feel like they're such good ideas for Chag. Oh, my God, that's so no, spot no! No! Yeah, if you DI the up e wrong, you get sour spot down and off of that, it just kills. Oh, man! I've literally <laughs> killed a Squirtle at zero like that once. Oh, from props, props. I'll play it, I'll play it, I'll play it, I'll play it, I'll play it. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it, that's just the thing. And the thing about the up e is it's like, you don't really have true things off of it. Mm. You have DI mix-ups, and you have yeah. several of them, and they're all deadly where it's like, okay, if you DI wrong, you get side beat, or you get back air. But if you DI it. that really wrong, you get down aired, <laughs> and you're not expecting that to kill you off the top. Oh man, and it's so good too, because like you said, it, it, it still has that fear factor that you put into your opponent. What's your DI? I can cover that if I read this properly. For Kaleo though, I'm moving up 2-1 here against Chad. Man, that, that's, I'm still reeling back from that sour spot there, man, but I'm also reeling back from MKLeo's really good ability to use up beat, because he uses it like, like it should be used, like a command grab, and then forcing damage. I think MKLeo's understands how to use that tool to its fullest extent. Yeah, and like, I always kind of say like, but that was a 0% damage. That was, that was, that was disgusting, layer. yeah. And, and I always kind of say, Byleth doesn't feel like a DLC character aside from the up B. Yeah. I like, this feels yeah. like a base game character, but the up B is the most DLC, DLC thing, thing about that. It them. is, it's one of the longest reaching tethers in the game. Yeah, I think it might just be the longest. Yeah, I, yeah. honestly, I think the, only, the second longest I would argue is probably just Joker. It's but definitely longer than long the Jokers. All right, I agree with you, man. I agree with you. No argument there. I... And even then, Byleth is still not a fast-moving character, so there is yeah. the weaknesses Byleth has. Oh, absolutely. But Leo's just playing around them so well here. Okay, so far, really good for Chad to throw out the threats of the back air, forcing Leo to hold shield, goes in for that grab. What a great conditioning tool for coming out here from the... Oh, man. Once again, using go going for that up B is really, really smart just to put Chag in those positions. All right, Chag finally able to fight his way back on, but he's not able to do much with it. There should be something. Gets the down mm -hmm. tilt. Air dodge up from Leo. He knows he can just stall out there, go as low as possible. I think there's a lot that a lot of people can learn from Leo just watching this set already. His understanding of a lot of advantages and yeah, disadvantages, but understanding how, man, Chag is going to be above him for just that one second. I think maybe the other DLC move is uh, up air. It's DLC. It's definitely DLC. Uh, that's got okay. some range. Uh, uh, up air and up, up air, up B and up smash are all insane. Yeah. Everything else is base game. Every, everything else is yeah. base game. Oh, man. Caught a little bit in the middle of that up air. Leo's still able to recover. I think Chad wanted to catch Leo jumping from, from the disadvantage, fortunately, especially being out like, all right, cool. I'm at the corner. Let me jump. Cover the common option you would see. Neutral get up, down tilt to, again, just crouch under the nair, uh, albeit a bit misspaced, but either way, Leo is just going all in on Chad right now. Yeah, he is running the entire train over there. Good for that down tilt, too. It's, got, it's a good poke. It's got good range. Up there. There's the tech chase down tilt. Oh! Yeah, Leo's <laughs> going to take a 3-1. <laughs> yeah, take a 3-1. Jeez. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about, is the, like, fast fall in the middle of the nair. Sends at that lower angle, and that's what sets up for the tech chase where mm -hmm. 